What you're going to start with is very warm water, comfortably warm on your wrist. It's a half cup. You're going to add your yeast. This is Bob's Red Mill Active Dry Yeast. It already smells good. So we're going to mix those together. That's going to activate our yeast. So just stir that and let it start getting activated. Now you're going to add a stick of butter to a saucepan and start getting it melted. If you've never had a chance to try hot cross buns, oh, are they delicious. Me and Mama worked at a bakery in Cartersville when we were um, back in the 80s. They always had fresh hot cross buns at Easter time. All right, that is good. So we're going to turn this off. We're going to add our sugar and let it start melting. Because you really want the sugar, you turn your heat off, but you want the sugar to melt before you add it into your yeast mixture. We're also going to add our milk. And this is two third cup of evaporated milk. And make sure you have it at least at room temperature and not cold when you add it because you want this sugar to continue to melt. We're also going to add our salt. We're going to add a teaspoon of salt. And I think that's mixed up good and I don't feel any sugar granules anymore. So we're going to go ahead and get this added to our yeast in our bowl. So we're going to add this to our yeast mixture. Now I'm going to set that aside for just a second because we're going to beat up a couple of eggs. So you're going to beat a couple of eggs and you're going to reserve a little bit of this to brush the top. Now you're going to reserve a little bit of it to brush the tops of your rolls with. You can cover that with some plastic so that it doesn't glaze over and get tough on the top. And then we're going to add this to our mixture. Now I'm going to take a whisk and whisk this together really good before we start adding the flour. And I'm going to go ahead and put in our spices. So we're going to be using a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon and a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. We're going to beat this up really good. Mmm, it smells so good. Yummy. Now we're going to start adding flour. Ready for the fun part? Now, I'm going to show you what I'm going to be using. We're using white lily bread flour and a sifter. You're going to start with two cups. And you're going to sift this in I'm going to start mixing this up with my little bread spatula somebody sent this to me and I'm finally getting to use it it's supposed to be really good for bread making I don't know the exact name for it. I'll put it on the screen for you. I'll look it up and put it on the screen when I'm done. Now you add that 
flour in and then you're going to continue to adding flour you're going to continue adding flour until it's at a good sticky consistency so that we can get it out on the countertop so i'm going to go ahead and put two more cups in here it could be up to four and a half cups but you just kind of use your judgment as you go so we're going to start with two more cups and make sure you sift it into your bread and mix it in a little bit at a time. Y'all, it smells so good. It makes me so hungry this morning. Now what you're going to want is a sticky dough. Not a wet dough, but a sticky dough. So you're going to continue to do this with your flour. And I know it's going to take at least four cups of flour. Or it should. And of course, you can use a stand mixer if you prefer to use a stand mixer. That is really close to being ready. So I'm just barely put a little bit more flour in it. Try to get it mixed in good. Let me move this out of the way. It's making noise. And I don't think I'm going to need any more flour, that's for sure. I don't think I'll need more than four cups. Matter of fact, this is good. So we're going to get this out on the counter and start kneading it. You're going to need this for at least five minutes. Now here is our um, dried fruits. I used half dates, half raisins, and I chopped them up really small with my chopper. Um, and the great thing about using the dates is they have enough sugar and powder on them that they help the raisins not be so sticky, okay? And so what I'm gonna do is we're gonna start kneading this dough and I'm gonna go ahead and start putting this out on the counter and mix in this in here as we go. Now y'all know I'm not a bread expert. I've never been one to make a lot of fresh bread. But I've always wanted to do it. And um, I have done it with the mixer, but I've never done it this way. I always thought my arm would wear out. And I'm gonna be honest with you, kneading it is not as hard as mixing it up in the bowl was for my arm. I have lymphedema in my arm because I'm a cancer survivor. So just continue to get the extra dough up off the table with your scraper. And try not to add a lot of extra flour to your dough. You can scrape off the dough from your fingers and add it to your dough too. Now you're gonna want it to rest for three minutes sitting on the table after you finish kneading it. So just let it rest, three minutes. Wasn't that a lot of fun? Now I'm gonna show y'all what I learned from Phyllis Stokes. And she was a YouTuber and uh, taught really good cooking. That she taught me 
a great way to rise my bread dough, and that is using a heating pad. So we're gonna take this bread dough, and it's not in the pan that it's going to bake in at this point. It's just sitting here in a warm spot. So in order to rise it, when it's in the pan and it has more of a direct heat, I put it on low. But when I'm just rising it, I put it on a medium heat. And you can actually, I wouldn't use a high heat, but a medium heat works good. And we're just gonna put a cover over the top of this and let this rise until it's double in size. So it'll probably take at least an hour. My heating pad has a automatic 40 minute shut off. So in 40 minutes, this is gonna turn off. I'm actually gonna turn this up on high since I have got it in this wood bowl instead of a glass bowl. And um, I will see you guys in about an hour. All right, y'all, our dough has risen and doubled. I did transfer it to a glass pan because the wood one did not work well. So if you've got a wood bowl, remember just to put it in glass before you start the rising process. All I did is dump it in here and trade it out. When I seen it wasn't doing a really good job rising, I don't think it's a good conductor of heat like the glass is. So we're gonna get started punching this down and separating our rolls. Here we go. So you're gonna take your dough and you're gonna half it right in the middle. And you can weigh it if you want to, to make it perfect. Now you're gonna half it and half it until you get 16. Okay, so now we have 16 rolls. We're gonna roll them and put them in a nine by nine square. I'm gonna spray this a little bit. So 16 should fit. It should be nine by nine, whether you use a round pan or a square pan, but a square pan's easier. And it needs to have sides that are at least two inches deep so that they can rise. Now, if you wanna make sure that they're perfect and round, you can tuck it on the bottom like so. You're gonna spray the tops with a little bit of oil some plastic over the top. Make sure it's loose fitting and not tight so that when they start to rise, it can expand. Okay, for the other half of my dough, I'm actually going to put it in a muffin pan. All right, this pan I put out on the front porch and it's in an aluminum pan, and as I told y'all before, aluminum is the best thing in the world to bake in. And so these have risen up really pretty, and they actually beat the ones I put in the pan first because I had them out in the sun. So I've taken the nine by nine, put it out on the porch as well. Be super careful taking off the plastic, and also be very careful brushing the tops because you do not want to smash the roll. I did pretty doggone good. They're really pretty. They rose up really pretty. They're shiny, gorgeous. Gorgeous! For the icing, a cup of powdered sugar, one cup, four teaspoons of your evaporated milk, A quarter teaspoon of vanilla extract. Extract. I'll try to be more careful this time. There you go. Yeah. 
Here are our finished hot cross buns. Now they make their small like this, and that's how they were in this old cookbook. And then you're gonna put the icing crisscrossed on top of them. So I'm just gonna make me a bag to put my icing in. You really don't need a tip or anything. You can just cut the end of it off. All right, these have cooled down and they can be iced. Okay, these are cool enough that I can ice them. So you can just put a cross on them. They are hot, they are fluffy, beautiful, yummy hot cross buds. Now for my favorite part, tasting. Let's give this bun a try. It's so nice and tall and it rose up really pretty and soft. That's a delicious roll. These are super delicious. I've tried them both. They're both good. And now this is a much softer bun when you cook them together in a square pan. Thanks for watching Colored Valley Cooks, where we cook like Mama did. Bye y'all, love ya. Hey y'all, it's Tammy with Collard Valley Cooks, and today we're making an Easter special hot cross buns. Boy, are they super duper good.